Welcome to Unity of Las Cruces virtual Sunday service celebration where God is good all the time and all are welcome, safe, and loved. Thank you for being here. And I bring you some more Maya Angelou this morning. This one is We are not our brother's keepers, we are our brother and we are our sister. We must look past complexion and see community. Dr. Maya Angelou. And also, we need joy as we need air. We need love as we need water. We need each other as we need the earth we share. Also from Maya Angelou. So thank you for joining us today from wherever you are. I'm sitting out on the front courtyard and uh, uh, brought my, my tea pot here and my tea cup and my cozy teapot. <laughs> And so from wherever you are, whether you're sitting in the car in a park or walking or lounging on the couch or sitting at uh, the kitchen table, thanks for being here. Thank you for, for coming and taking the time to be with all of us and nurture your inner spirit today. You can find us on uh, our website and, find, and see every week uh, what's going on and some of the postings that uh, we have on our website, which is Unity of, La of Las Cruces. Dot org. And we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You can send us an email at unitylascruces at gmail.com and, and receive our weekly email and slash newsletter that we, we say who's going to be speaking on Sunday and things are going on like book studies and the daily word on Wednesday and uh, various other things that might be happening. And that we send out on Friday morning at 4.44 a.m. So be sure to email us before uh, Thursday night. That's when we schedule it. Thank you. Now, please join me at, in a grateful moment of gratitude as we thank some folks. Uh, let's, let's begin with the Unity of Las Cruces Board, who's been uh, busy behind the scenes making sure our ministry coordinator, uh, Helen, is in good stead with the a Unity of Worldwide Ministries uh, by giving her a glowing uh, report that, uh, this uh, last six months. And also we want to thank uh, Jane Ray, uh, our social media outreach, all the helpers and donors out there that have been helping us, whether they're doing it on PayPal or sending us checks and, and helping in, in, in all the different ways you do, uh, whether it be uh, helping each other with in moral and spiritual support, all the different ways, our volunteers, and all, of course, our anonymous prayers. And we, want to, we don't want to acknowledge our Zoom and producer, uh, YouTube producer, Zoom and YouTube. He, he produces the, both of, uh, uh, situations every week, as well as the email. And that would be our Ken Warner. I also want to thank our musicians today. I've, uh, uh, we have uh, Max uh, Contreras and Barry Shaw. And, uh, and Barry's husband, Robbie, who, who is behind the scenes on the camera, taking some videos and things like that. And a beautiful uh, rendition of a song today, uh, especially requested by uh, Minister Coordinator Helen. And I wanna also thank um, uh, our speaker, which is Helen today, and our prayer chaplaincy, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, headed up with uh, Kay Brilliant. And in that vein, I would like, to ask all of us to keep and, and hold uh, Reverend Bonnie Smith in our hearts and in our prayers for the loss of her son. And, and in the same uh, uh, th thoughts, let's, uh, let me thank you and let's thank each other for our, our prayers, our affirmations, our visualizations mm -hmm. for not just the people we know, but the entire world and the universe. Holding up that vibration, you know, it makes a difference. It really does. And so let's, let's move on to some good news and a, and a smile. We have uh, uh, Helen Wright is, to this morning is bringing us the good news. So I'll turn it over to Ken and Helen. Thank you, Tanya. And I saw this um, item of good news and um, the talk today is going to be about God the good and really seeing the good in all situations. And I really wanted to honor 
people like this notes um, and give thanks for the goodness um, of, of people like her that rush into a, a bad situation just after the explosion in Beirut. She rushes in to, to save lives and to hold these beautiful babies. And, you know, it's completely right action in the moment and demonstrated with the God of her understanding in her and through her and as her that she's preserving life and seeing life and seeing the value of life amidst all of the chaos of the explosions and then the aftermath. So that is, that's what I wanted to share is this good news is, is there are always people to rush into the places where goodness and light needs to shine. And so it is. Thank you, Helen. Now doesn't that bring a smile to our faces and a, a, a little squeeze of our hearts? And if you would like to, to send good news that you have found during the week, mm -hmm. please send, us, uh, send Ken Warner an email at unitylascrucis at gmail.com. Uh, please send it to him and so he gets got some time to put it together before the Sunday service. But uh, we're welcoming anyone's input. Thank you so much. And now mm -hmm. let's turn it over back to Helen and open the service with uh, our opening prayer. Thank you, Tanya. So let's just take a moment to go within. Just focusing on our breathing and going within to that still, quiet place within each of us. And Father, Mother God, Spirit of the living, loving God, we give thanks. We have great gratitude for being here together in spiritual community. And as this spiritual community, we honor and know the divine love in each of us, the godly qualities in each of us, and the strength in all of us. And as we come together this morning, we also acknowledge the healing, the template of healing that is always there. And our prayer goes out to our own community of unity and the community of the new thought within Las Cruces. And this prayer is of healing, the healing energy on all levels of our being, made manifest, divine perfection, the healing on our physical levels, healing on our mental level, healing, healing of the pain body and healing of our emotional being and deep healing on the spiritual level. And as we hold this consciousness within this group, we hold the consciousness of prayer and the energy of healing. And we see this healing rippling out into all of Las Cruces, touching everyone in this wider community. We see this energy of healing that includes um, abundance and prosperity for holding that template and holding relationships and holding employment and holding abundance for the whole world, for ev all of humanity. We see that energy and the energy of healing rippling out to the United States, all peoples here in North America. And then acknowledging that on a global level and on a local level, there is grieving, there is grief. And again, that healing energy flows out, nourishing every level of everyone's being, all of their levels of their physical, mental and emotional bodies. And we see deep healing, deep peace, deep peace of mind, comfort and grace and ease surrounding each and every one of us. We see that light of God surrounding each and every one of us. We see all good surrounding each and every one of us in all of humanity. And for all of this, we are very truly grateful. We are grateful to God in us, through us and as us in all aspects of our life, in all aspects of our thinking, our speech, our feeling, our prayers, 
And for all of this, we say thank you, thank you, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. So it is. So next, we can move on to Steve Gaskell, Doer of Good and The Daily Word. Happy Sunday. We have a happy Sunday, August the 9th, 2020. Appreciation. Our affirmation today is, I am grateful for the good in my life. Our biblical reading comes from Luke 10, verse 23. Then, turning to the disciples, Jesus said to them privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. Today, I take time to appreciate the abundance that surrounds me. I notice the beauty of the natural world, the talent and dedication behind the music and art I enjoy, the skill and commitment of the people who work to maintain a safe and orderly world. The more I focus my attention on everything I have to appreciate in my life, the more I notice even more blessings. I am eager to share the gift of appreciation, so I give my full attention to someone I care about as we share a meal or a favorite activity or simply a quiet moment together. Feeling grateful for my life's blessings, I feel renewed appreciation for the love and beauty that enriches my life. In our affirmation together, I am grateful for the good in my life. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Steve. And now then, and Tanya will read our intention statement for today. Our intention statement affirmation, to create a sacred space where all who enter feel the presence of God, the joy of God, where all feel welcome, safe, and loved. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for the chimes. So this is the point in the service where, where I share uh, my thoughts for the day. The title of the talk is God the Good. And initially, this was going to be a joint service with Reverend Gary uh, Kanye, who is my mentor minister. And we were going to be um, sharing back and forth as if it was a licensing and ordination type situation where he would ask me my favorite Bible passage or a favorite Bible passage. And we would go back and forth with a metaphysical interpretation and some questions and bring this into our real life here in the moment, in the present moment. Um, and again, our title is, is God the Good and working with this, God meant it for good. And God meant it for good comes from Genesis 50 verse 20. Joseph is talking to his brothers and he says, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are taken care of today. And so there's this concept of God meant it for good, despite human action. And then the reason Reverend Gary cannot be with us today is that he was coming back from sabbatical um, a week last Friday, and he had a, quite a bad car accident, um, two vehicles involved. Both the drivers are alive and well. He's shaken up, he's bruised. Both vehicles were totaled. And so that led me into thinking, you know, there are many situations where in the moment we might think, how on earth can this be for good? Um, his accident, um, my own fall down the steps and the broken neck, the Beirut explosions this week. And so looking at our world and looking at different situations, um, how do we see good in, in what looks to be a situation that is anything but good? Charles Fillmore uh, talks about good as being the absolute. So this is in the level of spirit, great spirit. 
good is the absolute, the incomparable, that which is godly in its character. And God is omnipresent in all good. And Ernest Holmes writes that um, he talks about we, we must instill into the mind the fundamental proposition that good is without bounds. Only good and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. Psalm 23. And we must get this concept rather than continuing to think about there's a power of evil as opposed to a power of good. We experience good and evil because we perceive a presence of duality rather than unity. So really looking at this concept and focusing on the good, the higher good, even though we may not be able to understand or see it in the moment. I'd like to share a story with you, and I'm sure that many of you have heard this story in different shapes and forms. It's um, from a book called Zen Stories to Tell Your Neighbour by John Stuller. And he talks about this as being a Taoist story. I've heard it as the Native American story. But in this one, there's an old farmer, and he works the field with his crops for many years, and he has one horse. Uh, one day the horse runs off and he is without the means of helping in the fields and his neighbours come and say, you know, oh, woe is us, oh, such bad news, such tragedy, your only horse has run away. You know, what will you do? This is terrible. And the farmer says, maybe. And then a few days later, his horse comes back, but bringing three wild, wild horses with, with it. And neighbors come in saying, say, oh, celebration, oh, such good news, oh, how fantastic this is. Now you have four horses, such good fortune. And the farmer says, maybe. And then the farmer's son um, has to get up and try and ride, and he has to try and ride one of the, the wild horses. And he falls off, he breaks his leg. The neighbors come around again. Oh, such tragedy, tragedy such bad news. Um, that your son has fallen off the horse and broken his leg. And again, the farmer's response is, maybe. And then shortly after that, um, the army comes, taking all of the young men into constriction to go and serve in the army. And they take one look at the farmer's son and say he can't go because he has a broken leg. So you guess it. The neighbors come around and say, oh, what good fortune that your son doesn't have to go and fight in the army. And again, his response is, maybe. And the first time I heard that, I heard that on a, a pro TV program way, way back in Northern Exposure. And it really speaks to me of this non-judgmental quality. You know, in the moment, we don't know what the outcome of any situation might be. Um, in the moment, we may not be able to see good, or we might see only good. And um, the neighbours are really bringing home this concept of good and bad and judgment. What I found more fascinating in this book from John Schuler is the people, people's different reaction to the story. And also I asked the question, you know, what would we in New Thought say? So some of the reactions to the story, there were many. And the reactions include, you can't fight fate. God controls our lives. We may not understand his purpose, so just accept what happens. And then nothing, I mean nothing, occurs by accident. One of them is the, the farmer apparently doesn't believe in free will. When he always replies, maybe, he must feel that no matter what he says or does, it will not make any difference in the path of his life that his life takes. Another response, and there are many. Um, we never know what will happen in life. Man is so narrow-minded and naive, yet he claims to know it all. No one knows where fate will bring us, but people who have faith in God will have everything set right. Another one is que sera, sera. Life is a mystery. Don't take it for granted. Accept and try to enjoy the ride. And then another life isn't a matter of good or bad luck. It's about what you do with what happens to you and where and how you take it. <clears throat> I love this one. Tell the neighbors to mind their own business. And then there's another one that says, is there meaning to this story? Maybe. So looking at those different um, responses, and again, coming back to new, new thought and unity. From my perspective, 
unity and new thought, we believe in this constant, this principle of goodness and God. So instead of using this word maybe all the time, a different focus might be um, seeing God in all things, seeing good in all things. There's another story um, going back to um, this quote for the day, God meant it for good. So this is the story about this young man, Joseph. And I'm sure that you all know his story. Um, he is the 11th son of 12 sons um, of, of his father, Jacob, and he's the favorite. And he's born of Jacob's second wife, Rachel, and she was the favorite. Uh, Joseph, as he's approaching 17, he's demonstrating imagination, and that's one of our 12 powers in unity. And his name means whom God will add to. And at 17, he's given that beautiful coat of many colors. And at 17, as he's becoming an adult, he's, he's, he's having dreams. He has two dreams. And he, he makes error decision-making or error thought or misuse of imagination in that, for one, he's dreaming about superiority over his brothers and his parents. And then secondly, he's unwise in that he's already known to be the favorite. He's telling his brothers that you will all bow down to me. Now, knowing my own siblings and knowing siblings and even my kitty cats together, this favoritism and then going and telling them that they'll all have to bow down to him doesn't spell for a harmonious life. The brothers are not happy, really not happy. And this coat that Jacob gives to his son Joseph, um, many people say it's a coat of many colors. Um, research says it might be red and purple, which were colors of high esteem and royalty, and also maybe a symbol that Joseph might inherit from his father, all of the inheritance. So as you probably remember, the brothers take things into their own hands and they think that maybe Joseph would be better out of the picture. So uh, they plot to kill him, but instead, um, instead of killing him, they, they sell him into slavery with some passing uh, tradespeople who are going to Egypt. Um, the brothers then uh, fate his death and they stole his coat of many colors soaked it in animal blood and took it to their father. And their father is heartbroken um, at the story where animals may have killed his son. Totally heartbroken and distraught. At any point in this story, we could may say, this is terrible that this happened. Uh, there might be places that we say, it's good. So instead of his brothers murdering him and putting him down the well, it's good that maybe that he was sold into slavery. So his story continues. Um, he's sold into the house of Potiphar, who's quite wealthy. Uh, he becomes um, a servant within that household until Potiphar's wife accuses him wrongly of trying to seduce her. And he's thrown into jail. Now in jail, he then starts to dream, but dreaming in a right use of imagination or in dreams that are prophetic. Um, he, t he helps the jailers, he talks with other people who are jailed, and one of them happens to be Pharaoh, Pharaoh's butler. Jo Joseph is saying that he'll be set free, all will be well, all will be good. Years later, um, Pharaoh, the butler is back in service, Pharaoh um, is having dreams, and the butler remembers Joseph. Joseph interprets the Pharaoh's dreams as the seven years of famine, seven years of plenty, then seven years of famine. And then Joseph is, helps Pharaoh to prepare for the years of famine. And going back just for a minute to Joseph and this faculty of imagination, the imagination is the right use of imagination, is that it's right, it's positive, it's positive thinking. And it's said to be the first step on the path to the unfoldment of Christ consciousness that all true spiritual development begins with right thinking. This is new thought, this is unity, right thinking. And again, you know the story that Egypt does have a famine. Um, Joseph has helped prepare. Um, so, so when the famine comes, 
Egypt is fine and has grain to sell to other countries. Joseph's brother come um, to buy grain and they bow down before him um, and they don't recognize him. And initially, Joseph conceals his identity and tests his family, but eventually reveals himself and brings his family to the abundance uh, of living um, in Egypt. And, and Joseph forgives his brothers. Um, and there is, again, that famous line where he says, Fear not, for I am in the place of God. And as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. And that's where that comes from, that God, God has brought Joseph through to being of help to his brothers, of help to his father, and then of help to all of the people in the surrounding countries bringing grain and prosperity. So this is where we get this God meant it for good. And I would say that God always means it or works for good. And I, I see God, um, I, I, once, I, know, I don't own a GPS. Once I was subject to a GPS, which kept saying, um, every time you went off track, off, off the direction of your destination, this GPS would go recalculating, recalculating, and I see that God is our GPS for goodness. Um, God, the GPS is, is a God, a good producing system. God is our positive source. And God is helping us bring, come back to good every time we stray or every time we're in situations that may, be, um, may appear dark or difficult. So I was um, looking at James Dillett. Freeman, who has a beautiful um, art article called Pollyanna. And he's talking about these different situations that we might face. And he says there's four possible attitudes in a situation. One, you could believe that all things are going to work out and work hard to see that they do. So we're adding our good to the situation. We're in the flow of the universe and we're in a benevolent universe. Secondly, you can believe that things are going to work out and do nothing about them yourself. So that's a passive role. It's still a benevolent universe, but really isn't being in the flow of the universe and adding to the good in the world. Third possibility is you can believe that things are not going to work out and nevertheless work, to work hard yourself to bring some good and then the fourth possibility is you can believe that things are not going to work out and resign yourself to defeat. So the latter two are, are really seeing the universe as a hostile universe rather than a benevolent universe. And he points out that the only one that really works for us is to believe that we're in the benevolent universe, God is good, and to add our good, to add, it, add our good to the goodness of the world. He goes on, uh, James Dillard Freeman, he goes on to talk about the Pollyanna. And um, in unity circles, often we can hear some criticism that unity is old Pollyanna, all this positive thinking, feel good, hug, hug, denying reality. Um, it, where is it really grounded? And he goes on, um, James Dillard Freeman goes on to say, he's talking about this Pollyanna concept. If a Pollyanna is someone who refuses to face facts, certainly none of us wants to be one. We cannot get rid of facts by pretending that they are not there. But we can face facts and still know that God, good is there. Whether we see it at first or not, it has to be there because God is there. And we can seek in every situation to find and bring forth God's good. So this month, the unity theme is acceptance. I release resistance and experience acceptance. And there are many situations that we can think of in our own lives um, that don't look too great at first. Um, certainly my broken neck situation, but we all have a, something in relationships, something in our work, something in our health um, that doesn't look too great. And, and, the, and yet when we come into acceptance and rele release the resistance in the present moment, we can experience the acceptance and we can begin to 
bring forth the good in any situation. And sometimes with the hindsight, like Joseph did, we can look back and go, ah, these events all did contribute to some good in my life. And sometimes we may never see what the good is. We may never see that bigger picture. Um, and then we're in faith. Um, appreciating that God and good is always present. Um, I'm mentioning the Centre for Spiritual Living theme for the month because their theme for this month is in inclusion in action. And I'm really seeing that whatever the situation, our emotions or reactions or pain, wherever we're in, in a place of being or perceiving ourselves as separate from God, um, separate from good, for one, it's impossible. We can never be separated from the oneness, from goodness, from God. But secondly, um, the inclusion element in the oneness about is acknowledging our divine nature, our authentic essential self. This in the action of seeking in every situation to bring forth God's good. Reverend Bonnie is speaking next week and um, she's talking very much about prayer is the action through which we ever more include more and more people into our heart space. And she talks about two terms and I'll mention them because uh, they're part of a series of two talks and she's talking about forgiveness, preparation and practice, FPP. And she's also talking about this first person perspective experience, experiencing with our own eyes. Um, and both of those are relating to this, this call, this, this responsibility that we can have to bring forth the good, whatever the situation. Unity Las Cruces, we have as our mission statement, where God is good all the time, and all are welcome, safe and loved. We're affirming that God is good. We know that God is good. And our inclusivity is to use our spiritual GPS in each moment, in each situation, as to how to bring forth God's good. And that concept of our cup that can be filled. When we fill our cup with our goodness, and we fill our own cup to overflowing, it overflows with joy and compassion and goodness and kindness and love. We need to be able to fill up our cup in advance of a situation, so as we have a full cup with which to operate, this full cup that can then spill over and reach out to others. And we keep our cup full through prayer and right visualization and imagination, through white light, through standing with, through mindful speech. Um, I've noticed that, that sometimes the, the timing of what we say may not be the best. And I was particularly upset at a situation going back a few years and someone came and said, oh, it's all in divine order. Now, of course that's true, but it's not what I needed to hear in that moment. I needed more of a compassionate hearing me response. So I feel that it's important in bringing forth the good. The good might be silence. The good might be prayer. The good might be just standing with someone. And, but really to, really going within to our own GPS, our God piloting system, to bring forth what's needed in the moment, bring forth the good that's needed in the moment. And I'll give you a vi visual image. If you're in an ER state, you, you don't necessarily want Tigger, Tigger bouncing around all over the place. Um, the wisdom, the Tao of Pooh might be, Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, or Moo might be what's needed. And for myself, I always love to go to a saying that I first heard um, in uh, the best exotic Marigold Hotel. I believe it actually was said by John Lennon as well. But the saying is, everything will be all right in the end. If it's not all right, then it's not the end. And I like that as a reminder to, to keep going, to keep going in all of the situations, the tough ones, the good ones, and to bring forth this good. God meant it for good because God is good. And in all situations, we can seek that good and bring it forth from ourselves into the world. And so it is.
and I believe there's a slide, Ken, if you could put up the slide as we prepare for meditation. So I like this, you may have seen it before. I love this lion. And we've just gone, we're just in the portal of the lion's gate uh, that might relate to some of you. And I love this saying that some days you will be the light for others. And some days you will need some light from them. As long as there is light, there is hope and there is a way. So just reflecting on this concept of being the light for others and sometimes needing the light from others, we can also see this as some days we can bring forth the goodness for others. And that some days we may need to be held in the loving arms, the compassionate arms of the goodness of others until we can get back and connect with our own goodness and our own light. So as we slow down and can't focus on our breathing and go within, you can contemplate the, the good, the good that is in life, the template of good, the good that is the absolute, the good that is a power of God that we can always connect with. And just as with power and energy, we may, may wish to visualize ourselves as our own battery that sometimes needs charging. We need to plug into God in order to be charged. And needing to recharge in order to be able to bring forth our goodness, recharge with the good. We may visualize storing up this goodness in a cup, in a vessel. Maybe even in a necklace or a bracelet, something that we can touch, that we know that whenever we experience goodness, we can store some of that goodness, that feeling of goodness, that knowledge of goodness, that expression of goodness. And we know that goodness is unlimited it's always available so by whatever means we always have a means of plugging into that goodness plugging into the reserves and the resources and the nourishment of god the good And going deeper within, going again to our own personal sacred sanctuary. A place that we know that we can close the doors on the outside world. And for that moment, resting in the arms of God, resting in the presence of God and resting in the good of God. And we remember our true nature, our true essence. We remember our goodness. As God moves in us, through us, and as, and as us, and as God is good, we are good. So taking these thoughts, these sensations, these expressions of goodness, we rest in the silence for just a few moments in the silence.
And as we gently begin to come back from this place of meditation, we bring us with us this, this cup, this cup of goodness, this cup, cup of good, of healing, of love, of light. We bring this cup full and filled and overflowing with compassion and love, divine love, with abundance. And this cup is filled with God's goodness, always available to us. And gently as we come back a little more into our current awareness, just beginning to maybe wiggle your toes or wiggle your fingers. Become aware of the sounds around you, the sound of my voice. Become aware of your breathing. And become aware of a gentle state of alertness as we move out of meditation. And as we move out of meditation in one form, we move into, in a few moments, a different form of connection, meditation through special music. And my love of some irreverence and humor, and my British humor, um, we're going to have uh, Max uh, singing and whistling and Barry Shaw on the piano as they bring to us a very special um, experience of the music always look on the bright side of life and with beautiful photography too so I invite you to always look on the bright side of life One, two, three, four. some things in life are bad they can really make you mad other things just make you swear and curse Chewing on life's gristle, don't grumble, give a whistle, and this'll make things turn out for the best. And always look on the bright side of life.
thank you, Barry, and thank you, Max, for that beautiful interpretation of always look on the bright side of life. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Max. And now we move into the time in our service where we have our prayer for faith and announcements, and we are with Kay Brilliant. Welcome to Unity of Las Cruces, where we know that God is good all the time. Please join me in prayer as we affirm our prayer of faith. God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God dwells within me, guides my way through every moment, night and day. I now am wise, I now am true patient, kind, and loving too. All things I am can do and be through Christ, the truth that is in me. God is my health, I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing quick. God is my all, I know no fear, since God and love and truth are here. Amen. We have a couple of announcements. Um, I want to remind you that while we are no, not physically with one another, we are always together under the light of God, that you can send your support, your checks, your gifts, your tithe to Unity of Las Cruces, P.O. Box 1143, that's Las Cruces, New Mexico, 88004. And um, tithing is a part of our spiritual discipline and our spiritual growth. So um, let's keep um, the abundance flowing. That's how it works. We give, that money goes to others with love. We give with love. We send it out in love. And of course, then love comes right back to us. And also, in addition, I want to remind you that um, you can offer a prayer request in any number of ways um, through Unity, um, Silent Unity. You can call with a prayer request. You can send mail, as we do when we're together and we do the little uh, sheets of paper. We mail that directly to Silent Unity. Or you can submit an online prayer request uh, form. And all of that information is on your email, or you might remember, this is where all of that information is, and you can do that. Thank you, Kay. And now we have Jane McNeil with our prosperity affirmation. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. And we are grateful. Thank you. Our slide now shows our weekly tithe. And this week we are tithing to Unity New Brownfields, which is the um, Unity Center where Reverend Gary Kanye is the minister and he is my mentor minister. And sending them especially love, healing love and prayers and our tithe and our abundance that all may be well. Jane Ray now brings us our affirmation of, for unity. Guided by infinite love and wisdom and with God as our source, we now behold unlimited possibilities as unity of Las Cruces grows and prospers. Thank you, Jane. Now we invite back Kay and Virginia Brilliant with our prayer for protection. Please join us as we affirm the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. 
Amen. Amen. And so it is. Next, we have a slide uh, for our next week's speaker. And next week's speaker is Reverend Bonnie Smith. And she's bring, bringing us, um, talking about prayer and the power of prayer as, as part of our action. Our next slide is the Daily Word, the WWW, the Welcome the Word on Wednesday. So it's a very nice um, time in midweek where we get together and explore, the, the read the Daily Word and explore its meanings in our life and also pray together and share together. So welcome anyone and everyone to join us on Wednesday. Thank you. Please reach out to each other this week. And again, we continue to stay at home for the most part, but we do not need to be alone. We can always reach out to anyone here at Unity, each other by phone, each other by Zoom, and just know that we are held in that cup, that vessel of goodness, that we are loved, we're all loved, and that we do connect and we will be together again soon whenever it is safe to do so. So thank you for attending this week's virtual Sunday service celebration here at Unity. You're welcome to stay afterwards for conversation and saying hi. And uh, next we have, we close with our Let There Be Peace on Earth. And I have a vision and, and I can hear it here in my head that we're all singing this together. So let's sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. being here today where God is good all the time. So it is. Namaste.